Ardra Shepard, and this is Tripping On Air, a place to talk shit about what it's like to have MS. Normally, I like to make everything about me, but MS also affects the people we love. So weighing in from the partner perspective is Alex Hajar, my friend whose wife also has MS. Join us monthly as we dish about everything from symptoms to stigma. If you have MS or you love someone who does, we want to connect with you. The worst MS symptom is usually the one you're feeling. Pretty sure my painfully cold feet have changed my personality and not in a good way. But in my 20 whatever years of MS having even worse than my blue feet, my mobility problems, my freaking bladder, the very worst symptom of my MS is, drum roll please, fear. Not knowing when you're gonna have a relapse or what that relapse might do is like living in one of those revenge movies. You don't know how or when, but someday this boogeyman is coming for you. I don't say this to scare you because there are better treatments and better outcomes for trippers all the time. Plus, the good news is that there are more ways to manage fear than there are ways to fix my drop foot. It can take a lot of work to get fear under control, but when you have MS, you start to learn that you can handle more shit than you thought you could. It's the silver lining to worst case scenarios coming true. But I want to talk about the fear that some of the people around us have. I like to make everything about me, but MS affects the whole house. Alex, your partner has MS. She was diagnosed shortly after you were married, and I can imagine what she was going through at the time. But what were some of your immediate fears? Oh, yeah, my immediate fears were, I guess it's unique because my aunt had MS while I was growing up. So I had a bit of a window, although it was opaque, I guess, because I didn't know all the details, but I had a, a bit of a window on what it might look like in the future. But at the time, I just felt like life was going to start to get limited, like we were going to be limited. And that was scary to me because we were traveling at the time. So we had already been, we had a, you know, a, a leg taken out from under us, so to speak, and no pun intended, actually. Um <laughs> immediately. So uh, it was really scary to think that, you know, we were in our early to mid 30s. And this, uh, which is late for a diagnosis, uh, typically, at least in our experience, we found but um, yeah, it was really scary to think that things were going to start being taken away from us. So, you know, um, previously, we had thought about having children, and that was going to become, you know, not a reality for us. Um and so, and then traveling, traveling is our big thing. That's what we love doing together. And, um, and now we, you know, even at the time I was thinking, how are we going to get out of this hospital and when are we going to get out of this hospital? So a lot of yeah. immediate fears and also like, yeah, the immediate fears of how are we going to get out of this hospital in a foreign country, but the big picture mm -hmm. ones too. And I just want to clarify for listeners that an MS diagnosis doesn't mean you can't have kids. Um, but mm -hmm. it is something that a lot of people will will take into consideration. Uh, yeah, it's like it's definitely like a major um, lifestyle curveball. Is who is the bigger warrior in your relationship? You or your partner? Me. I'm the bigger warrior. <laughs> Absolutely. For like in general and uh, and when it comes to MS, I think. Um, but it's because of fear. It's because of fear. I'm just worried that when are things going to stop being possible and why? And I don't know. I, I just, I'm, I circle Nicole like, like a, like a <laughs> moon circles a planet. So I'm constantly worried about, and I, it's, it's totally irrational and unreasonable. Um, but yeah, that's just kind of how I am. I mean, I would argue that fear is the rational and reasonable response mm. to something so unpredictable and and like legitimately scary. But were you always the worrier or did MS bring that on? I think MS enhanced the worrying. <laughs> yeah. I always find that like I find more and more with my background, like my, you know, I have an Arab background and an Italian background, and they're typically full of anxiety <laughs> uh, is kind of built into the DNA. But with MS, it, yeah, it, it, with MS in the house, it made things scarier and more anxious. So I find that I'm always anxious. 
I mean, I would say it's the same in my relationship. It's kind of like mm. I'm dealing with the scariest shit. And of course, I have my own set of fears and anxieties, but it's my partner who is who really is the worrier. And I don't know, maybe it's, you know, that wanting to have control, of course, over things that we can't yeah. control. <laughs> yeah. That's um, exactly, so what are the biggest worries that that you have or your partner has? I mean, I worry, of course, about um, disability. I worry about small things too, like where's the nearest mm. freaking bathroom? You know, it's uh, it's about learning to mitigate that fear. I think for me, one of the revelations of really realizing that fear is the worst symptom is realizing that um, like my ability to cope with shit when it does go wrong, that gives me a lot mm. of confidence or some confidence, a skosh of confidence that uh, <laughs> I'll be able to handle things in the future. But it really, I think it's like the human mind, the hardest thing to deal with is uncertainty. And MS is by definition uncertain, right? It's like it's, this yeah. constant lurking Threat. And random, which adds to like the anxiety part as well, because everybody's version of MS is, you know, pretty unique. Um, yeah. So, you know, your symptoms might not mirror, the, uh, you know, uh, my partner's symptoms or yeah. our friend's symptoms. So you can relate in that you're constantly worried and probably scared, but you can't, you, you can't always relate in who has drop foot and who has fatigue and who has that, the, the symptom or that symptom. So I think like, I can't even think of the cliche movie you know, of like, but it is that like, yeah, you don't know how, you don't know when, but somebody's going to get you. It really it's is lurking. that feeling. Yeah, <laughs> yeah totally. Exactly. Yeah. And so here's like one thing that I feel actually I was talking to my best friend about this recently about what she remembered from when I was diagnosed 20 years ago mm. and she her memory of like the same scenario was so different than my own and mm. I felt like she was so calm and chill and it helped me and she can't believe that I don't remember how scared and how freaked out she was really? and so I feel like I know at least in my relationship, my partner keeps a lot of his fears and anxieties to himself. Is it the same with you in your marriage? I, when I, yeah, no, I, I think I wear a lot of my fear on my sleeve, but mainly just with my partner. I, I don't bring out the concerns that I have with anything unless it's, unless people are in the circle, you know, so I've, we've made friends, um, w you know, with people from our individual support groups and stuff like that. And we've made, you know, and their partners I'm friends with now, uh, my friend, Mike, he's a really good guy. Um, so I'll, you know, we can talk about it because I know, you know, he's in the know, but other people no, I don't bring it out, but yeah, sorry, with my partner, I definitely wear my fears on my sleeve. I think that comes with the trust of our relationship. And I know she's not going to judge me for for being scared of, of something that she deals with primarily. Um, but yeah, I don't think it, I don't know, it wouldn't make me comfortable to to hide it. I would be more uncomfortable. That's so interesting because it's not the same around here. Really? I, okay. Yeah, no, I feel like my partner has feels like he has to protect me from like he doesn't want to burden me with mm. with his worries about what's going on with me but it's still i mean i'm not stupid i can tell you know when he's anxious or or wigging out and i actually feel like he should talk to you because it's a lot of the time it's like if you could express that anxiety i could maybe give you a little bit more chill about it I think you know I'm not that good right? at hiding it yeah, I yeah. mean, I'm open. Let's chat. But yeah. I mean, it's just like I, I don't know. I'm, I'm very bad at hiding how like anxious I am. And so I was on a trip recently with just a couple of guy friends, and I was visibly anxious most of the time. And they were telling me to calm down. They did a great job of calming me down. But I'm like, this is inbuilt at this point. And I think it does come from the MS, you know, the constant fear of stuff. And it's just like an ingrained fear. And I'm like, I just want to be a chill dude and hang out and be normal. But I'm always worried about 
getting somewhere on time or having to stop or planning things a certain way. Um, so yeah, I need to take more steps to calm down. But when it comes to sharing my feelings, I almost have to. So um, and you guys have been living with MS for five years, I think now? Approximately, yeah. And has any of that abated? Like, have you learned, like, have your fears gotten worse or stayed mm. the same? Or do you have, have you acquired any teeny little bit of chill? Um, <laughs> yeah, it so like it. <laughs> no, it's not, it's not that I've, you know, that the fears have changed so much. I think I've become numb to a lot of, you know, the fears. So when we had the immediate fears, those were, you know, you were constantly on edge or I had my back up a lot and stuff like that. But now I'm like, this is just a day-to-day -day thing. Maybe there's some newer fears, but I don't know. I think fear is just constant. It's a symptom for everybody that lives in the house with MS. And I think that I had, yeah, bigger fears or, or maybe more prominent, they felt more prominent but they they've muted now and I'm more concerned with maybe the longer term things or the unique things like, Oh, uh, we're planning to travel. Now I'm going to get scared. <laughs> but if I, if we're just planning to go to the grocery store, I won't be as scared. You won't be as scared at the grocery store because you've done that and nobody died, you know? Exactly. You, you, and I think it's the same with travel. A lot of it is, you know, it's scary until you do it. And then you mm -hmm. do it and you figure out that you can and you find those workarounds. Like everything is is scarier than it is until mm -hmm. you do it, right? That's like the cliche of fear, yeah, I think. Yeah, exactly. And I should say, like, we have traveled a lot in the last five years. We've been to Thailand, we've been to Vancouver and Edmonton, and we've been down to Mexico and we've taken mobility aids or we've, you know, put we've left them at home so we've we've done a lot of those things and we're still able to do it and enjoy ourselves so there's no saying you can't but it's still like it, it maybe it's a bigger hill to climb or it feels like a bigger hill to climb every time we propose something new I mean the first time we traveled with a mobility aid there it was like planning yeah there's like mm -hmm. there's a lot of anxiety that lives in our house but we have um a rollator that converts to a transport chair and my husband oh, yeah like set his his uh stopwatch to like time himself to make mm -hmm. sure he could do it fast enough to get in and out of cabs without pissing anyone off you know <laughs> and it's like but then you do it and it's you know it's you realize um i mean i guess like fear is useful in that sense it gets you prepared and uh and and the, but then we had a great trip we kind of conquered that so yeah. Mobility yeah. aids are great. I do the same thing. You pretend you're an F1 pit person uh, <laughs> and you time yourself and stuff, but it, it. I know there's stigma that comes along with them, but it's kind of like different suits of armor that you choose for whatever the obstacle you think you're going to run into. But that's the problem too. You never know what you're going to run into. So that's terrifying. But then you run into it and you climb over it and you're good. And you 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 don't have that fear anymore. So yeah, probably some fears have dropped off, but solely because we've we've pushed through it. So yeah, and so and I always tell people like to reference that you know like you hacked this before you'll hack mm -hmm. the next challenge too. Yeah, no, if that's that accurate. makes sense. I mean, I I wanted to ask you what you as a partner want your partner to know about that experience. And I mm. feel like I wanted to ask that because um, just in my own situation, it's like, it's so hard to get that information out of my own partner, but it feels like you do a pretty good job of letting your wife know what your emotional <laughs> needs are. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, I try, sometimes it comes off it's it's tough. I mean, it's it's a it's a weird dynamic, and it's very dynamic. So it's some things like I could, you know, be sharing something, but it could come out sounding very negative, and then we end up just fighting. Like, give me an um, example. Well, okay. So to answer the question, I'll say I, you know, what I would like um, my partner to know is that I think partners, or at least from yeah, my perspective is that, you know, I'm on just as much a learning curve with MS, um, as you are, um, if not more, because I find that people who, who have MS get 
they get stuck in with all of the details. You know, they have to go to uh, appointments and they have to take all these meds. And I'm not conscious of that. I'm sort of, like I said before, orbiting, but more of in a day to day reality rather than, a, you know, getting in the weeds with all the meds and stuff. So if, if she's getting frustrated with something um, and I don't know what it is, but then she, she might, you know, snap at me like, I need this now, uh, which is fine. You do need that now. That's totally valid. But I didn't know that. I didn't know that just sitting here watching cartoons. So um, there is like, I think a very, uh, it's like a bit of a ballet that we have to understand where you are physically dealing with something that you're dealing with pain or um you know, drop foot or something like that. I mean, drop foot's obvious when you get up and walk, but maybe there's some pain or cramps or something that's happening while we're sitting at the, you know, watching TV, but I don't know that's happening. Um, and I think there's frustration that builds up with that, with the pain that's coming or the tingling sensations or anything like that. And I'm not aware of that. So the frustration that's building up, you just tell me you're getting fresh or tell me you need something <laughs> as soon as you need it. And I will go and do that thing for you. I'm not going to question it, but I don't know. So please don't get mad at me. So basically <laughs> you need to, you need to up it. your marital uh, ESP game, right? ESP. What's that? <laughs> like your, your marital, like uh psychic connection where you don't have to like. Oh, ESP. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, we're what? We're almost 10 years into this marriage. So yeah. We're pretty close, I, I think. I, it sounds like you guys have a really solid team approach. And I think that's, you know, um, and, and we do too. And I do want to mm. say how, um, oh, yeah, I mean, it definitely does add something to a marriage. You're either in it together or you're not. And I feel very blessed to have um, a healthy partnership. Not everyone does. And, um yeah, it can be it can be tough. There are people with MS are at an increased risk for uh, unhappy marriages and even abusive marriages and partnerships. Mm -hmm. And um, so yeah, I think counseling for both parties uh, can be very helpful because it is a lot to go through and it's a lot to digest and process. Yeah, we haven't done like uh, we haven't done like a marriage counseling. I guess because we luckily haven't felt the need to do it, but I know, yeah, I know it does affect marriages. Yeah, yeah I and mean, not you know. Yeah, I don't even necessarily great, mean like marriage counseling, but just like individual counseling or just being able to talk to somebody and and find coping strategies if you're struggling. Yeah, absolutely. Do you? I mean, do you take part in any groups or anything? Because I do. I take part in like a partner group, so partners of people with MS. Uh, yeah, my I mean, my very first experience with support groups when I was first diagnosed was uh, I was in my early 20s. And I went to an MS society, no, no knocking the MS society support group, but it was not, it didn't look like people like me, the people were decades mm -hmm. older and much more disabled. Right. And so just through word of mouth, because social media wasn't a thing back in my dinosaur youth, I was able to <laughs> like collect three other women in their 20s. And we formed our own group in my living room with lots of wine. And just you know, like, I I really learned that it was important to connect with the people who were your age and at your um, disease stage and mm -hmm. also drinking stage or like, I uh, like yeah. just to be able to be like, who are all facing like start of career relationships? Do we want to have mm -hmm. families? Like these were the choices that we were all facing. So I, I think however you do it, like formally or informally connect with the people who are going through the same thing as you. I mean, it's so much later now. I'm not in any groups. I feel like, mm -hmm. you know, I have like, I'm pretty good at articulating my meltdowns and like getting the support right. <laughs> that I need. But um, yeah, I think, yeah, it's the, the value of having somebody who can say like, oh my God, me too. I thought I was the only one. I is, find, yeah. Yeah. So I find I just yeah I find myself saying that a lot to this guy Mike and we like just to be clear too we don't only talk about MS stuff and I think that's really the point of it too because you do live with it in your house you know or it lives with you rent free which is the worst and um 
Yeah, Rent but hearing free, someone also fucking expensive. Exactly. That's what I mean. If I could charge MS rent, it might be a little bit less anxiety uh, <laughs> causing, but it doesn't. So, but when I can go, I can go for a beer with this guy and we can chit chat about, you know, music or anything else. And it's a lot easier. Uh, and then when it does, cause it will come up or it has come up, you know, on its own MS and, but it's nice to hear someone say, uh, Oh, I'm always worried about, climbing stairs and i'm like me too man uh whereas like a lot of my other friends they don't talk they don't talk about any fears with climbing stairs or any they're like oh i had to wait at the back of the you know the line or something like that and i'm like at the airport i'm like whoa we just cruise through not that that's a good i mean it's a perk but it's not <laughs> a great perk. you know it's a bittersweet perk. Well, but you, I think you can you can relate right i mean there, when somebody is diagnosed there's this obvious um obvious spotlight on the person mm. with the condition to be looked after and i think sometimes we don't remember that the the closest loved ones also need some kind of care and maybe that mm -hmm. can't come maybe the partner can't provide all of that when they're going through this at the same time you know i think they're they're definitely one of the burdens of having this disease is feeling like i have to reassure everyone around me a lot of the time that I'm okay, even when I don't yeah, super yeah, yeah. feel like I am. And so, um, yeah, I just, we all have to look after ourselves and, and partners. I mean, yeah, it's, it's I always thing. get the question and I've got it several times this weekend and it's always, how's Nicole? Like they'll ask me, uh, people will ask <laughs> me, uh, they'll take me aside and how's Nicole, how's she doing? Yeah. And I'm like, you can ask her. I, you don't have to ask me. She That's is perfectly what my capable. husband says that too. He he will like ask <laughs> yeah. her, you know, like. And speaking to the learning curve thing, sometimes I don't even know. Sometimes she's, you know, she could be, she has a whole range of feelings. She's a human <laughs> being with her own capability and agency. So please ask her uh, because I'm not going to give you any dirt or anything. So, I, I, and I don't want to be sarcastic. They are, you know, I, their questions are coming from a genuine place, but you don't need to ask me. You can just ask that person. If you want to ask me how I'm doing, I will respond. But And um, is that something you yeah. feel like, hey, like how about asking how I'm doing also? Um it's Do you weird. Feel Maybe overlooked? It, yeah. Yeah, I def I think that's a thing. I think I think partners probably feel that. I feel that once in a while, but I don't always feel it when people are asking that question. Um, but the focus is on is on my partner and it's on the person who is dealing with the disease. So, uh, yeah, partners are overlooked. I would say I feel that way sometimes, but uh, what I wanted to ask you actually was, do you have fears for your partner? Yeah. I mean, that question hits almost like a gut punch. I mean, mm. of course, I think the knee jerk answer is to say, you know, <laughs> I'm afraid for him to be a burden or for him to be my nurse, but those are actually fear. Those are still my fears, you know, mm -hmm. about um, needing that level of care. I would say my real fear for him is that he prioritizes my well being way, like, he puts himself last. Mm -hmm. And I worry that I mean, if he's ever in a plane crash, he will definitely be the first to die because he will put everyone's <laughs> oxygen mask on before he puts his own on. And so, I mean, I don't know. I, I can't influence or change that. It's the kind of guy he is. But mm -hmm. um, I, I definitely worry that he <laughs> does not pay enough attention to his own well be he does things for me that he would never do for himself so oh really okay yeah, yeah just um yeah i yeah i think that's like probably a societal thing too right you're kind of like you know you don't have the disease so you are by default the protector of the person with the disease which isn't you know you know necessarily right because the person with the disease is still able to do a lot of things for themselves so um yeah, it's an interesting thing. I mean, I have I have certain fears. I don't know if Nicole has fears for me. I don't know if my wife has f certain fears for me, although I'm sure she probably does. She uh, probably wants you to chill out a bit, right? Like, I definitely also want my husband to just take a chill pill and just, you know, like, 
We got yeah. this. We got if this. If I could go into like some sort of, I don't know, incense filled room and, and listen to, I don't know, Thai bells ringing, maybe I would chill out. I need to do that or something. I need to just chill out because I, think- I am. Even now I fidget a lot. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's just a natural thing, but, but th- it definitely is highlighted with MS for sure. I mean, if I could wrap this up and go back to my early diagnosed self, I would tell her Mm -hmm. that it is totally acceptable, fine, reasonable to freak out. This is some scary, scary shit, Um, Mm -hmm. but you can't live there. You, You find the workarounds, you find the hacks, you adjust, you figure out that you can do shit that you thought was scarier than it is. You're going to freak out again when you have a relapse or an attack or a setback. Also normal, you know, don't try to not feel that stuff, but you, you figure it out, you find a way. And Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, it's, it's almost like MS gets harder, but it also gets easier. If that makes sense. I think that makes sense. And yeah, from a, from a partner's perspective, I remember being in the hospital and hearing the sort of diagnosis that we got and yeah i i pick myself up off the floor and be like it's gonna suck but it's gonna be okay too so you know you'll you know that sort of cliche stuff but it's it's true it's true at the end of the day you're gonna hit challenges no matter what maybe they'll be a little bit more challenging now but you'll still get past them and you'll still be okay i mean we're in a good place so i'm happy Yep. I think uh, let's spend the rest of the day. It's it's beautiful. It's sunny. Oh my God. Yes. Have a cocktail maybe and just, Two. and yeah. t- take, take the rest of the day off from feeling afraid of shit. Thanks for listening to Tripping on Air. Don't forget to visit us at trippingonair.com. Mm-hmm.